Hello, welcome back everybody. Today I wanted to talk to you about journey number two. Um, last time, if you haven't watched the video, go watch the video um, for journey number one. Today we're going to talk about number two, which is just very similar to number one actually. So instead of doing your five finger scales on the right hand side, we're going to be doing them on the left hand. So before we had this, right? So we're just going to be doing that on the left hand. Okay, so it's actually the first line and the second line are exactly the same as turning number one. Just move down one octave and we're going to be doing that on the left hand. Um, on the right hand though, um, we're also going to have the same rhythms. We're going to have a inverted C chord. We're going to have a G7 chord. And then just switch back and forth from that. The rhythm is exactly the same. We have the chord, two beats of rest, chord, chord, two beats of rest. So it sounds like this. Just like that. And that's, that's all you have. Um, the dynamics, I would say, are also very similar to the first one. We have a crescendo and then a de decrescendo, crescendo, decrescendo, just getting a little bit louder towards the top of the note on the five finger scale. first one so really we're just working out our left hand here as compared to our right hand one thing I didn't mention in the previous video is that we do want to have this wrist movement so this kind of circular movement if you're a beginner don't worry about it right now but it is something to think about if you are moving into the intermediate territory that whether it's on your right hand or the left hand we want to have a fluid wrist um, and what I mean by that is, um, if you can see my, let's just adjust my screen here. So we're having this kind of circular motion. So if I'm doing it here, right, it's kind of like, so we're, we're not having a stiff wrist. We're having a, a fluid wrist this way. Um, and again, I would recommend going to a teacher if you don't already have a teacher that's near you. But um, this is sort of as good as I can get on a YouTube video to just touch on the fact that um, in the beginning you might it might be easier just more stable to have a fixed position wrist but as you advanced um, you do want to get into that circular motion so we can put more musicality and just more feeling and be able to control uh, the dynamics and the um, articulation of the music as well so if you haven't already, check out my video where I play this piece. I will put it in the link below and also right up here. Um, let's see, anything else I'm missing? I tend to play this a little bit slower than the right hand one, which is number one. Obviously, it's a little bit harder because for most of us, our left hand is not as agile or not as muscularly developed as our right hand. So don't be worried if you feel like it's harder because it is on your left hand, but the goal would be to get to a point where you are feeling comfortable with the left hand similar to the right hand. And even now for me, like I'm not playing them at the same speed, uh, which is okay. Um, but I think the goal is that we wanna get them as close to each other as we can. And I think that's, what Mr. Cherney was trying to tell us is that we want to be as flexible and agile and musical um, on our left hand as we are on our right hand. So that's pretty much it for today. It's a pretty short video. Hope you like it. Um, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. My plan is to go through all the 50 little studies for Cherney and we, along the way, you will learn a lot of different tips and techniques for piano playing that will help you in your piano journey. Thank you and hope to see you next time.